Good morning, everyone, and welcome to you as we celebrate our sixth Sunday of Epiphany and this special occasion in the life of this congregation. You waited for a long time to call a senior pastor, and it finally worked. And um, um, I didn't, when I was searching, I didn't know where I was going to be going, but it turns out God had us in mind together, and for us, it's a chance to come home. I want to say a word of greeting to those who are watching on television. Not everybody could make it here this morning. And I know some of you will be seeing the service on television this week. We have some people who tune in online, and I want to say greetings to all of you that might be watching us over the media uh, this coming week. It's great to be with you all this morning. Now, you've heard a rumor that I'm married, but you have seen no evidence of it. <laughs> and I would like to clarify that right now. So I'd like to ask my wife, Carol, come on up. So you actually get to lay eyes on her. <laughs> well, um, as you know, Carol's been traveling for work, but she's finally back uh, here now, and we're in a new house. You'll have to be happy to know that we've um, got settled, uh, gotten settled in the house. And, um, and her dog Lily is there. She's doing well. Y you want to say anything this morning? Okay. <laughs> well, I wanted to prove that, you know, I'm actually married in. And I have some members of my family. My sister Donna is here. Uh, she lives in 40s. My mom is coming. She's from Tomahawk. And I think I've got... Oh, she just pulled it. Oh, here she comes. Uh, okay, everybody make my mom embarrassed and turn around and, and wave at her. <laughs> 
That's Marcy Schmidt, and she's here from Tomahawk. And I think there might be another one or two from Tomahawk. As many of you know, I, I grew up in Tomahawk, so this is coming home for me. And it's really a delight to be here. We also want to um, we introduce uh, our special guest, our bishop, Jerry Manchold, who is here to help with the installation this morning. And we're really delighted to have you with us. So thanks for being part of the service today. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit unusual to get started because I don't want you to be surprised during the course of the service. There are two songs in the bulletin that you don't know. And the reason I know that you don't know them is that I wrote them and you have never had a chance to see them. Uh, but I thought on my installation day it might be nice to share that part of my own ministry. I've been a hymn writer for all these years and I'm um, very happy to share with our congregation here some of the hymns. So the first one is Search Me, O God, and I've got it worked out with the bell choir and the organist. They're going to play it one time through and then I'm going to sing with the choir one time through so that you get to hear it so that later on in the service you can sing with gusto. So, Katie? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, and lead me in your way. You know my thoughts and all my words. Be with me all my days. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, and lead me in your way. Search me. God and know my heart and lead me, lead me, lead me in your way. Thank you. You already started to pick up on it. That's wonderful. There's one more. It's on the last page of the bulletin. And this is one of those chants that you sing during communion. It's one of those songs that can just be sung over and over a number of times. And Katie will be in charge of how often we, we sing it during communion. Just a very simple communion chant. You are known in the breaking of the bread. You give us hope for tomorrow. Your love is shown in the gently flowing wine. You give us hope for tomorrow. Very good. Well, the rehearsal is over, and we are going to worship this morning together. And the first part of our worship is the installation, not of me, but of our church council. Thought it would be a perfect day to install the church council. So I would like the council member to stand by and we'll call on the names in just a second. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we are all called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the church in thanksgiving for what he has done and continues to do for us. It is our privilege to recognize and support those who are engaged in the work of this congregation, especially those in the ministry of church council membership. The following persons have been elected by you to the positions of leadership and are asked to come forward as their names are read. Todd? Joel Lemke. Jim McDonald. Karen Ilton. Don Thompson. Gail Pucci. Pam Houtman. Terry Cook. Pat Gerbitz, 
Annie Hoffman, Tammy Molsky, Dave Enerson, Martin Lieber, and Melissa Thompson. Dear friends, you have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. Listen to what St. Paul has to say to us. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives us the same in each person for the good of all. To the Council, you are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect him in whose name we gather. You are to work together with members, with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which you have been elected? And if you are, please say yes by the help of God. Yes, yes. by the help of God. And now I ask the congregation to rise. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If yes, please say yes by the help of God. Yes. Yes. I now declare you, my friends, installed as council members of this congregation. God bless you with his spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, for all who offer themselves in your name, we give thanks. Give them the joy of service and constant care and guidance. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of ministry. That your name be glorified, your people live in peace, and your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. And we will sing our opening hymn. You may want to rise again. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This is the peace of victory for our God. be 
with you. And also with you. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, beginning with verse 15. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish, you shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Here ends the reading. sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. 
I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations. For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. Here ends the reading. <laughs> Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand, over, hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adulter adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it, that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, and do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First of all, I just want to say it's a wonderful to be here with you today. I give thanks to God that this day is here, that the Holy Spirit has been at work, that Trinity Congregation has been provided a pastor, and play, we're grateful that you have answer this call and come. Special word of thanks to the lay leadership of this congregation. I know we've got a new church council installed today. Blessings on your work, but to those who have been here as the church council and provided leadership, and especially to those of you who served in this most important work of serving on the call committee, on behalf of the congregation, on behalf of the wider church, thank you for your prayerful and discerning work. Pastor Schmidt, members of Trinity Congregation, to all of you who are here, you who are very young to the oldest among us, 
Choose life. As I looked over the lessons for today, as I prayed over these readings from Deuteronomy and Paul's letter to the Corinthians and these, these words of admonition from Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, what jumped out at me as the appropriate word of God for this day is choose life. They come from, the words come from the first lesson, Deuteronomy, in the 19th verse, where it says, choose life so that you and your descendants may know prosperity in the life that God wants for you. Members of Trinity, I, I know you have had questions in your own life as a downtown congregation here in Stevens Point about your own future, the vitality, and what it means to be a congregation in an urban area. To you, on this day, as you look forward in this next chapter of life, choose life. And Pastor Schmidt, here we are. <laughs> As we said a little bit earlier, he and I visited briefly at our churchwide assembly in New Orleans, not knowing where all of this future would lead us, but here we are. A lot of changes in your life. Welcome back to the state of your birth. Welcome here to Trinity Congregation. But as you've come to this time with lots of changes in your life and yours, Carol, as you venture forth from here in this new chapter of ministry, leaving behind um, the circles of higher education and seminary life for this ministry in the congregation, choose life. And to all of you who are here, choose life. I don't know what's going on in your lives individually. It may be grieving over the death of a loved one. It may be the anticipation of the impending birth of another grandchild. Oh, that's my life. That's right, it's coming up. <laughs> it may be some economic uncertainties and not knowing where the next paycheck will be coming from. It may mean that you're a high school senior or you're in your last year of college. For all of us, I know, we're living in days when the political atmosphere around us is highly charged and we live in divided and polarized families and communities and churches. But what I do know for all of us is there are all around us people who need a listening ear, who need a helping hand, who need a voice of advocacy, who need a stance of solidarity, who need a word of love. To all of us, upon your hearts and souls, I lay this word of God. Choose life. The word is addressed to the people of Israel when they have been through a rough period of life. They have been wandering around for 40 years in the wilderness, every day going to mealtime with the same menu set before them, manna in the morning and quail at night. They've been following this God who addresses them with his voice from the cloud and from thunder and light. They follow this God for 40 years in the wilderness. This God who 40 years earlier had heard their cries as they in their lament cried out from the sufferings as a people of slavery suffering under the harsh and heavy hand of the Pharaoh in Egypt. God in compassion came to them. And now they were about to enter the promised land and God says to them, knowing that there were temptations and options before them, he says, 
you have before you life and prosperity or you have death and adversity. And God says, choose life. It's kind of like a parent, parents saying to a child whom they have raised, this young adult who is now about to set out on his or her own foot. The parents say, child, we gave you life. We raised you the best we could. We invested ourselves in you. We love you dearly. We've tried to give you all that you will need. As you go forth from here, choose wisely. Choose life. God knows, of course, that we might choose something else, that there are other ways. That we might think, well, we have a better path to travel. We know a better way to walk. We might think that all those commandments that we've been given, that are summed up so clearly by Jesus in earlier words in Matthew's Gospel, where he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and, and your neighbor as yourself. We might think that these commandments are nice spiritual language, but they just don't work in the real world. We might think that these commandments from God so filled with the promise of life and prosperity are good when we're together and being nice to one another in church, but they only are a part of a thin slice of our life. We may think that they apply to others or we may even delude ourselves like that rich young ruler that once, who once came to Jesus and said, all these I've kept since the days of my youth. But Jesus is very clear, very clear in this Sermon on the Mount, where he is saying to the disciples and to all those who had listened to his words, he is saying, there's this coming rule of God. God's kingdom is coming, and it's for all people. It's for every part of your life. It's for the whole of creation. It's for all powers and principalities. It is for all nations and all peoples. In fact, he goes on to say, he has come not to abolish the law. He says, I've come to fulfill it. And in words, that are a part of today's Holy Gospel, he says. You have heard that it was said by people in ancient times, but I say to you, and he even intensifies and makes more specific what these commandments are all about. And these commandments, dear people, they're really about our life together as people here on earth. I know we have to kind of find our way through these words of Matthew's gospel. But as we get inside of all of these words, these words here and those from what we call the Hebrew scriptures from the Old Testament, they are given to us so that we might live rightly and live in good ways with one another here on earth, here in church, here on the streets and in the homes here in Stevens Point, here in this land in the United States of America and in all of the towns and the villages and the pathways of the global community. God has called us to live together in right relationships honoring and respecting all people, forgiving one another as we have been forgiven by God, 
speaking the truth in love, staying connected with one another, and trying to work through our differences when we don't always see eye to eye and have our disagreements. Honoring commitments in marriage, in family life, in church and in society. And always seeking peace and harmony in the hearts and in the homes of people everywhere. And always speaking the truth and always seeking the truth, and always trying to say and to do what is right and good for our life together. Do these words apply to our lives today? <laughs> yes, I think so. So, very so. I mean, we live in a day when everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a particular philosophical viewpoint. Everybody's got a particular political philosophy. And speaking the truth, and seeking the truth, and doing right and trying to, to seek what is right and good for our life together is especially challenging. And what is even more challenging is when people spread rumors and gossip, intentionally lie, tell half-truths, spell out a story with a satisfying political slant. It happens in families. It happens in church life, and the bishop gets called in. It happens in our country and in the global community. And wherever it happens, and whenever it happens, it always leads to death. Relationships are destroyed. Community disintegrates. And our lives become at very adverse, and we perish. It happens, my friends, whenever any of us are led astray, and we bow down and sacrifice our, lives, sacrifice our lives to anything other than the God who gives life to the world. Then we lose our ways and go astray, and we perish. I wish I could simply say, choose life and you'll find the way and all of life will be simple. I wish I could simply say the way the old Nike commercial had it, just do it and you will be okay. And I wish I could say to you, Pastor Schmidt, that just choose life and go forth from the day and life will be rosy in your time as a pastor here. But life isn't that way. I wish we didn't have to deal with the messiness of life the ambiguities that are inevitably a part of decision-making, or the trade-offs we have to make because of the limits to our own life, the limits to our resources, the limits to our own love and wisdom. And I wish we didn't have to deal with the own darkness that is in my own soul and in your own soul and simply a part of human nature. You know those times when sin rears its ugly head and out of our very mouths comes words and out of our lives come actions that betray the best of our intentions. Such is our life in the church and in our homes and in the world. When it happens, we soon discover We've been led astray down the path to adversity and death. It disrupts home life, marriages fail, we have congregational conflict. It's destructive in local and national politics. Even when some of us are seeking to do right, even when we're putting forth our best of efforts, we realize we can come up short and we just don't have it within us 
to do what needs to be done. My friends, it's just when we come to that moment that we give thanks to God, that God who eons ago heard the cries of those slaves in Egypt heard again the cries and the laments of a people in bondage to sin. God saw people incapable of freeing themselves and came in Jesus, sent his only begotten Son to be the life and love incarnate here on earth. And he came proclaiming God's kingdom, God's coming rule. He came with love and healing and mercy for all. And when the authorities were threatened, he was betrayed and handed over to the powers, hung on the cross to die and laid in the tomb. But just when it appeared that darkness and sin had had the last word. God raised him from the dead. And that love lived. And that love lives. And that life lives. And it is that news of resurrection hope that has grabbed our hearts and brought us together to this day over all these generations of Christians that have come before us. We live in the hope of resurrection life and the love of God that will not know death, that will not be bound. And when we put our trust in this living God, this good news of the gospel, when you and I listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and simply walk in the ways of Jesus, we are choosing life. Oh, we may still find ourselves butting up against all kinds of pressures outside of us and within us. When we try to show love to a neighbor or welcome a stranger, or when we try to listen with our whole heart to, our, to the concerns, the deep felt concerns of our liberal or conservative brother or sister, we may find it hard to be choosing life. We may find it hard choosing life when we try to build bridges of understanding instead of erecting walls of distrust and suspicion. We may find it hard when we stand alongside of and advocate for the poor and the immigrants and the refugees. We might even find ourselves bearing the cross and suffering as we try to do ministry in this messiness of life. But following Jesus, and bearing his message of love and mercy and care for all is never the path that leads to death. It always, it always, it always leads to life. And Pastor Schmidt, this is your calling. Welcome back to the East Central Synod of Wisconsin. You are here because of the lively spirit of God has been, been at work in you over these months of discernment, been at work here in this congregation as they discerned this call, been at work in all those who surrounded you, your wife and family and loved ones who have walked with you through days of discernment. God who first claimed you in the waters of baptism, and the God who then called you into the ministry of word and sacrament has been at work and called you to this place and context of ministry. You are here because you answered the call and because, because God who gave you life shows you 
to be about proclaiming that life in the midst of these people. How all this happens, we don't know. The mystery and wonder of God has been at work in the lives of all of us and in your life and mine in these last few years. But you are here to proclaim this good news of God in this community to help mold this people to be the biblical community of Christ's disciples and to care for these dear people and with these who are the elected leaders to help lead the congregation forth in its witness and service here in Stevens Point, but throughout the world. God's blessings on this life and ministry and on this journey. To you and to all of us who are gathered here, to all of you, choose life, follow and heed this call of God. Amen. Having been authorized by the church to install the Reverend Dr. Clay Schmidt, our co-worker in the gospel as senior pastor, I now ask for certification of this call. After prayerful deliberation, we of Trinity Lutheran Church have called the Reverend Dr. Clay Schmidt as senior pastor. I present him and this letter certifying the call. Congregation may be seated. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And a reading from Matthew, where Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And a reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, Attend to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Clay, in the presence of this assembly, I now ask you, will you commit yourself to, to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and your use of the means of grace? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people? Nourish them with the word and sacraments and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. That Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. Amen. Invite the congregation to please stand. People of God, will you receive Pastor Clay Schmidt as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and the steward of the mysteries of God? Then answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us.
Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? Then answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. Pastor Schmidt, the office of senior pastor is now committed to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Thank you. Get ahead. Oh, right here. <laughs> You have been called to be among us to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called among us to proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I present to you your new pastor, Pastor Clay Smith. Thank you very much. What a pleasure it is to have us all together today with our beloved bishop to celebrate this occasion. Pastors get installed every time they come to a new church. But my brother never got installed when he became an engineer. <laughs> my wife didn't get installed when he became an attorney or my sister when she was a teacher. This installation is for all of us. It's the whole church. Thank you. We stand for prayer. Called to be a light to the nations, let us pray for God's justice, peace, and healing. Holy Lord, you alone are God. Remove jealousy and quarreling between Christian denominations. Hold us in the unity of our baptism as we work together to serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You called into being the first fruits of the earth. Guide gardeners and farmers who till the soil and tend the fields. Bless their work and in due season bring forth the beauty of the land. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, your love knows no bounds. Break down barriers caused by nationalism. Challenge our stereotypes. Give us courage to engage in difficult con conversations with those whose experiences are different from our own. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. pour out your Holy Spirit on all who struggle, especially Jody, Nate. Pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with one another.
Merciful God, everything, everything in heaven and that belongs to you. We join the liturgy which you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word, O God, dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look, for, we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours. Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of love. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
before I pronounce the blessing, I want to mention that we are having this wonderful meal together right after the service. And Todd is going to lead us in a table grace um, after the uh, closing hymn. And so before you're dismissed, he'll offer table prayer. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Katie's assistance, I invite you to join in our table blessing before our meal downstairs.